Hello, I'm Dr. Angela Katwa. I'm an earth scientist, a presenter, and I'm someone who's really passionate about helping audiences of all ages and backgrounds get excited and interested about things behind me, rocks and fossils. I've been incredibly honored this year to be recognized with two major awards. The first is the RH Worth Award from the Geological Society of London. And I was given this in recognition of my 20 year career, inspiring audiences of all ages and backgrounds about the geosciences and in particular my work for the Jurassic Coast World Heritage Site. The second award I received was from the National Diversity Awards. And here it is. I was recognized as a positive role model in race, faith and religion for my work championing the geosciences and the natural heritage sector as a woman of color. So with all these awards, you'd think I know a little bit about how to engage and interact with audiences so they really get excited about these amazing objects behind me. It does take experience and it does take time, but there are a couple of tips that I can give you today in order for you to hone your own skills. The first thing I would say is know your audience. Whenever I go onto a television program or whenever I'm creating a YouTube show, I have a person in mind, the person I'd like to talk to, and I'll tailor my language and the story that I want to tell depending on who that person is. So for example, if it's a family or a child, then I'll try and put in some really funny facts, probably some gruesome facts as well, a bit like horrible histories, because I know children love those things. And I think that's really important because you're getting a little bit of educational information across, but ultimately you want to keep them entertained. The second really important rule of effective outreach and engagement is storytelling. We have a really difficult job as earth scientists because these objects are the ones that we have to tell stories about. They're inanimate, they're complex, and they're extremely old. So we're asking that audience to step back in time using their imagination, but we have to use the right language and the right tone to help them to do that. So this piece of coal, for example, is a fossil fuel. And that automatically generates some level of interest because you're thinking, well, where are the fossils and what makes it a fuel? And it's by telling the story of this rock, this piece of coal, that we can begin to paint landscapes, environments that are long gone. And we have to use the trick of really painting visual pictures, engaging the emotions with what that might have been like in order to bring this rock to life. One of the key questions that I always get asked is, what is the most valuable skill that you have as an earth scientist that helps you to present and engage audiences? And that key skill I would say is creativity and creative thinking. And I do this by putting myself into spaces where there are artists, because it's through working with artists that I begin to develop my imagination and my language in order to interpret things like this for very broad audiences. And there's one particular artist that I can recommend that you follow. Um, she's called Lorna Rees, and her company is called the Gobbledygook Theatre. And recently, Lorna and I worked on a performance together um, called Geophonic, and I provided all the scientific expertise and advice. And that is a really good project to look at to see how artists can take scientific interpretation of fossils like this and then interpret them in a completely amazing and innovative way to engage audiences of all backgrounds. So I believe that those three aspects that I've talked about really make for effective science communication and outreach. Firstly, to know your audience. Secondly, to have a brilliant story that you're excited to tell. And third, to embed creativity and that expression of creativeness in all that you do. When you put all of that together, you'll find that people really want to listen to what you've got to say about rocks and fossils. So it's probably a good idea to show you what I mean by creative storytelling for audiences. And I'm going to use this example of this fossil that I found um, in Simmonsbury in Dorset a couple of weeks ago when I went to see Geophonic, which was the performance that Lorna Rees directed and created. Now, as I was walking along the path and I was following the group of people with their geophones, listening to the sounds of the earth, my eyes were raking over the land. They were raking along the roadside because I knew that this was a place to find ammonite fossils. And I found this on the side of the path, just lying there in the soil. And I was so excited. I think my heart skipped a beat when I saw it. And I picked it up 
and I took it home and I cleaned up all the mud off it and you can see that beautiful shape, can't you? You can see the patterns, the suture lines there. You can see the beautiful spiral shape of the shell. I just think it's absolutely magical. And when I close my eyes, what I like to do is I almost like to hear the rock story. That's really important to me. And I want to tell you the story of this rock now. 180 million years ago, this ammonite was swimming about in these beautiful seas, these beautiful turquoise seas. And the bottom of the seabed was sandy and all sorts of creatures were living in, the, in that muddy sand, that muddy substrate. There were bivalves and they would be shuffling along, digging into that mud, trying to find a home so they wouldn't be eaten by something else swimming about in the water. And this ammonite would have been swimming about in that sea. And then one day, Perhaps it was attacked by something. Perhaps it just died of old age, I'm not sure. But it died and it sank to the bottom of the seabed. And it would have sank and gently fell into that soft sandy substrate, that soft sandy bed of the sea where it was all quiet. And it sank and its body would have been, you know, covered by scavengers trying to eat the very soft squishy parts of its head. And eventually when those soft squishy parts would have decomposed or been eaten, it would have been covered by layers and layers of soft sand. And over time it would have been buried and completely turned into stone, a fossil for me to hold in my hand 180 million years later. So there you have it. A lot of effective science engagement and outreach is all about what you feel in your heart and how you get it out through those words. And for me, it's all about igniting someone's imagination, making them feel something about what you feel. You want them to fall in love with what you love. And in my case, that's rocks, fossils, and landforms. So everybody has it within them. You just have to find that spark within yourself and help others to see it the same way that you do. So thank you so much for watching my video. I hope it's been really helpful for you just to get a few insights into how you can also become a storyteller of rocks.